just want to bring some things to light tonight. And if you have the ear to hear, let the Spirit begin to speak to you tonight. If you have your Bibles, once again, I'm going to ask you to turn once again to the book of First Timothy. Everybody there? First Timothy chapter 4. We're going to read the first couple of verses there. The Word of God says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart. Say depart. Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to, the, to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Help me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name that is above every name, Jesus of Nazareth, Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor, O God. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for your goodness, O God. I thank you for each and every man and woman in this place, in the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray, Father, as I decrease and your spirit increase, Lord, that your spirit would have liberty in this place, Lord. Use me as a vessel to speak to your people, O God. Father, we just thank you. Glorify yourself tonight in this place as we be careful to give you all the honor and all the glory in the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone in agreement says, Amen and Amen. Paul uh, warns young Timothy that there were some things that are going to transpire in the end times. Amen. And I believe that Paul was uh, alluding to Timothy about the time at that time, but I also believe that there was meant for us today. Can you say Amen? Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible says that the Spirit expressly says, so he had to, Paul had some revelation from the Spirit of some activity that was going to take place in the end times. And he brings this warning to Timothy, amen. He says that some will depart from the faith. Today I begin to come up here and I walk down San Julian and I see hordes and hordes of people in the street. And it made me wonder how many of them knew Jesus. How many of them got caught up in their own ways and began to do their own thing? As we look out in the street in Skid Row, we see all kinds of people. And I believe that there is the majority of the people here either know Jesus at one time and have walked away from him, or they don't know Jesus at all. You see, the Bible says that in the end times, people were going to depart from the faith. And so that leads me to believe that it, there was a time when they believed. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, somebody. There was a time that they believed. The Bible says that they were going to depart from the faith. And that they were going to have an ear. Or they were going to give heed to deceiving spirits. As we look all around us, I believe this warning wasn't that there wasn't deceiving spirits at that time. But I believe the warning was that in the end times, the intensity of the attack of these de deceiving spirits was going to grow. Can you say amen? I believe that it was alluding to the fact that, that in the end times, the pressure was going to be turned up. Can you say amen? That these deceiving spirits were going to be so persistent and, been, and, and trying to have people drawn away from the faith. And it must have worked because as you look at it, it says that many will be drawn away from their faith. These deceiving spirits are out in the earth realm today. You see? Deceiving people that they can have pleasure in things apart from God. The word tells us that in the end times, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Look out there, and you see how many people are satisfying their flesh, getting high and doing all these things, engaging in sexual activity outside of marriage, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. To me, that is a warning when I see these things, that the Spirit of, as the Spirit of God that says that expressly in the end times, men will fall away from the faith. We see it happening around us all the time. Someone might be in church today, but you don't see them no more. What are they doing? Where are they at? 
You see, deceiving spirits cause people to believe that they can make it on their own apart from God. There's a false prophecy, I would say a false prophecy that's, uh, uh, that is plaguing the, the world today. There is a man, and I'm going to expose his name, named Harold Camping, that says that Judgment Day is on June, uh, May the 21st, I believe it is. May 21st is the day that he said that it was going to be Judgment Day. And I say that's a false prophecy because the Word of God tells me that no man knows what day or hour, not even the angels in heaven. Deceiving spirits. Paul goes on to say that not only are they going to be deceiving spirits, but they're going to be a doctrine of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy. Men behind the pulpit telling you what not to do when they're doing it themselves. Men behind the pulpit speaking lies, walking in hypocrisy. Not trying to live a holy life in the end times. If you go back and you look at the original King James Version, they translated deceiving spirits from seducing spirits. You see, I believe that there's just such a sensuality in the earth realm today. You look on TV and you see all these uh, half-naked girls in commercials. <laughs> You can't turn the channel without seeing some type of sexual uh, uh, illusion or, or sort of some type of provocative advertisement. And they're there to seduce you into buying their products. Paul warns Timothy that in the end times, you and I might encounter a deceiving spirit or we might encounter the doctrine of demons that speak lies however I believe that if you hang on to Jesus like a pit bull on a pork chop that you just might escape the lies and the deception you see, the devil has a purpose, and his purpose is to deviate us from the plans of God. He has spirits and agents out there, especially designed to bring us to a place where we walk away from the truth. The Bible says that the devil, the God of this world, has blinded the eyes and the hearts of men. With the sole purpose to keep you and I from the plan and purposes of God. If you will allow the devil to gain a foothold in your life, he's going to come in all the way. We're talking about the end times. You see, the devil uses these demonic forces to oppose the work, the man of God, and the plan of God. Come on, somebody. God is a God that loves us. He says in his word that he is not like you and I, but that he keeps his promises and that he doesn't want no one to perish or die and go to hell, but he wants all men. His desire is that all men will repent and receive the gift of salvation. But then we got those agents that work against the word of God, the seducing spirits, and the doctrine of demons that speak lies. In the midst of our, of our adversity, you and I should not falter. You see, I don't care what you hear. If you've got the truth in you, then you should be able to detect the lie. Come on, somebody. You know how the government trained their, their uh, treasury agents to detect counterfeit money? They train them by hand, letting them handle the real stuff all the time. So when the, when the fake stuff comes, they can detect it. If you've got the truth in you, you don't need to worry because you'll be able to detect the lie that the devil has in these end times. 
But it takes more than just having the Word in you. The Word it needs to be applied to your life. Can you say amen? amen? You see, I believe that God always speaks a word of warning to His people before disaster comes. End times. There's a story in the Bible in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a prophet used by God. He was used by God after the captivity, after the Persian captivity of the children of Israel had him in captivity. He became the king's cupbearer. He's the one who used to taste the wine for the king because at that time the Persians had a lot of enemies and they thought that they were, somebody was going to poison them. So he became real close to the king. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Nehemiah, chapter 2. When you get there, say, Amen. We're going to do a little reading, Amen. Uh, I'm going to take you through the whole first, or the whole chapter, chapter 2 of Nehemiah. We're going to 